There are some thoughts emerging in the game and even videos and the written word suggesting that we shouldn't be concentrating too much on technique. We should be more reliant on learning the game. This wonderful game of snooker. Whilst there's some merit in that, it's okay for the person who can consistently pop the ball. What about the player that can't rely on his technique to pop the ball? You know, to my, to my mind, uh, and I will stand on my soapbox in whatever corner it is and shout it to the world. The first part of learning this game is to develop a sound and consistent cue action. Right, for you feathers, remember, keep everything still. Chin on the cue. Oh my God, what a flipping player. How can you consistently pop the ball if you're delivering the, the cue in a different way each time? You're standing in a different way each time. It's, it's just ridiculous to suggest that you can do it consistently. If you look at players like Ronnie O'Sullivan, yeah, even he admires uh, Neil Robertson's cue action. He admires it. How, it, it. You don't see how he can miss with that cue action. Sean Murphy, wonderful cue action. Kyron Wilson, wonderful cue action. Wow. Now, it's common knowledge that I've coached Kyron since he was a youngster, right? We started with the cue action, yeah? And any problems that emerged within his game, was, that problem was within his cue action. You know, the play, you've got to be able to get down from there, get your cue action working, and pop the ball. If you cannot do that, how can you learn the rest of the game? I've recently had a young man, a good player, centre break player, yeah, come down to me. He's making centre breaks, but he's just missing balls he knows that he shouldn't be missing. Now, it took a certain amount of time to analyse what was happening. He knew he knew that something was wrong and he tried all manner of things to put it right. But because he didn't have, shall we say, the knowledge of coaching and teaching within himself, he, didn't, he was working on the wrong things. All right, so it is a bolt line here. It is a straight line. And if we come to that bolt line and you can use it to your advantage, we can put the cue on the bolt line and we try to deliver the cue on that walk line and we're still on it. Now one of the things that was happening with this young man, if I put these chokes down to emphasise the point here, look, we're either side of the, of the walk line nice and even. He was getting down and he was doing this. Bring it, I'm exaggerating it to make the point. Right, so he'd come from there and his cue was coming across like that. And he'd be online sometimes, another time his cue would be there, another time it would be there. He was a good player, but that sort of, just that silly little element was letting him down. Now if we go back to, if I can mention names here, Sean Murphy, when he first came on the scene, he used to do this with his cue, bringing it down on the line of the shot. Right, there's another uh, ex-pro, um, a young Irishman, he used to do this. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before. But both a little bit silly, shall we say, but technically correct. Now, if you can do this, as Ronnie O'Sullivan does up to a point, yeah, from there, bring it across, and it goes online, I haven't got a problem with that. But some people do it, and the timing of actually doing it you know, brings the cue not quite online. So now this is why they miss occasionally when they shouldn't be missing. The aim starts with the butt of the cue. It's no good having this online there if that is offline. Because all you're going to do is cue across the ball. And you're going to push the cue ball offline 
and miss the pot. Now, if you're doing that consistently, and it's like that all the time, yes, the brain will adapt. The eyes let the, the vision in, the brain uh, receives it and, and adapts to what it's seeing. From there, you're okay queuing across the ball. If you're doing it consistently all the time, you will learn to adapt your game to suit it. Does not, in my mind, add, lend itself to that consistency needed at the higher level. You know, you've got to, uh, Judd Trump is a wonderful exception. He aims with right hand side on the cue ball, and then as he delivers it, he brings it back online. Got that? It is a one off. I would not advertise you, uh, advocate that you copy him. Right? Try, you know, it's a flaw in his game that he's had ever since he was a youngster and he's learned to play with it and he's wonderful. So if it isn't broken, you don't fix it. That, that's a good maxim to have. But most people trying to do that, it's broken. It needs fixing. Okay, so use this sport line. And all I'm saying is, if you think of Ronnie O'Sullivan, he does that as he gets down. It's online, the way he hits the ball. Why would you change it? You don't. But one lad came to me and all I had him doing, he was doing this and the timing of it was quite wrong. And all I had him doing, because he was comfortable standing like that, see the shot like that, he'd come across, hover and then down. That's all I had him doing. From there to there, down. I want you to think about bringing that cue down. Thinking about this, the aim starts with the butt end of the cue, not the tip end. All right, and that way you can get through the ball. I was talking to Mark Selby a couple of years back and he tried long blues. Yeah, and he just said, he, we, we weren't coaching. I don't mean to pretend that, we're just having a conversation. And he said, if you're playing that long blue and you get through the ball, which you've got to do, you better get through it straight. Now, that's Mark Selby. What is he? World champion several times. You don't ignore comments like that from players like him. You think about it and you say, what can I do to develop what he's saying? You hit the ball, yes. But you get through the ball, yes. But you get through it straight. Otherwise, you're going to miss. <laughs>